Welcome everyone to the Center for Subsurface Energy and the Environment webinar series. My name is Matt Balhoff and I am the director of the center. To learn more about us and the research we're doing, please visit our website or follow us on LinkedIn. Uh, in the center, we have about 26 faculty and principal investigators working on a variety of subsurface applications, as you can see here, as well as technical disciplines and applying engineering tools. We collaborate with industry in many different ways. Some of those are with our industrial affiliate programs, uh, a few of which are listed. Uh, in each month, we have these monthly webinars, um, which are informative industry-driven webinars by researchers and collaborators with the center. Uh, they are hosted the second Tuesday of each month at noon via Teams, and then uh, we put, we upload them on our YouTube channel. So we hope that you attend in person so that you can ask questions, but if not, you can visit our YouTube channel and uh, watch some old webinars. Uh, upcoming next month, Dr. Nicholas Espinoza will be giving a webinar and we'll have another one June 13th. And uh, we ask that uh, you post your questions in the Q&A section and our speaker will answer as many questions as they can um, at the end. Uh, today's speaker is Dr. Marcos Machado, and um, he is a senior petroleum engineer and senior reservoir consultant for Petrobras. Um, he is spending a, a year and a half um, here at UT Austin as a visiting researcher working with uh, Dr. Sefanori and Dr. Del Shad. Uh, he received his PhD in reservoir engineering in 2009 in Brazil and has worked with Petrobras since 2007. Uh, so with that, I'll uh, pass it on to uh, Dr. Machado. Okay, thank you, Dr. Bahoff, for the nice introduction and for the invitation to speak in this webinar. Uh, as Professor Bahoff said, I'm a professional from petroleum industry and I have worked with field development for more than 15 years. During this step, uh, to get the approval for to implement a new oil recovery project for a specific field, for example, a common task for the reservoirs team is to indicate the main risks and their potential impact on that project. The idea for CCS projects is the same. The project team needs to map the main impacting risks and include them in the field scale models to be computed. That's the reason uh, why I select this topic on modeling CCS reservoir risks to share today in this webinar. In this talk, uh, I will highlight the main uh, reservoir risks related to the CCS uh, projects and how to represent them in field uh, scale numerical models to support future projects. Uh, we'll cover the CO2 trapping mechanisms in porous media. It's the first part of my presentation. Uh, I will talk about the storage risk and the injectivity assessment uh, based on published lab data and field results. It's the second part of my presentation. The second part, uh, I will include the, the water vaporization due to the CO2 uh, injection, creating a dry, out, a dry out effect around the well. Uh, we'll talk about the mineral dissolution leading to fine migration, and I will conclude with hydrate formation with subsequently um, permeability and porosity reduction. Uh, my plan is to quantify uh, those mechanisms uh, using uh, synthetic models and real field models. All those uh, mechanisms are coupled with other phenomena uh, involved in CCS modeling such as CO2 solubility, hysteresis trapping due to the relative permeability and capillarity, and uh, mineral reactions uh, to generate uh, mineralization, CO2 mineralization, or dissolution of primary minerals. Uh, this integration uh, enables uh, the construction of models uh, to, for careful evaluation of CCS uh, projects and try to feel a lack of numerical study, coupling different mechanisms observed on lab scale, but discussed in their importance in field scale. So my focus here is talk about field scale and how to represent those 
risks in, in, in field, field scale models. Some assumptions, uh, the, my main assumption in this work, I, 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 I don't model, uh, I don't have a geomechanic model uh, for this case, um, for the structural trap, for example. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm assuming no concerns about the CO2 leakage or fault activation. I know this is important. Uh, this is a real uh, a risk, but in my case, I will talk about only about the storage risk and the injectivity risk. So uh, let's uh, go to the first part. I, 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 sh I share my, I, I split my presentation in two parts. The first part, I will talk about the storage risk. Uh, our goal is to understand the main trapping mechanism and how to model them in field scale models with a feasible uh, simulation time. Uh, in this study, uh, I will be concerned with modeling of three uh, main mechanisms of CO2 trapping in porous media. The, the CO2 trapped as a residual gas, the, the CO2 soluble in water, and the mineralization or dissolution reaction. The first uh, mechanism that I will talk is about this, the residual gas trapping. Um, relate to the uh, re relative permeability, hysteresis, and capillarity. Um, this graph, this graph uh, shows us how the relative permeability of CO2 in this X uh, varies uh, when the CO2 saturation in this X axis uh, varies in porous media. The CO2 injection uh, follow the input uh, gas relative permeability, the drainage part of the, the curve, uh, increasing uh, its saturation in porous medium. With the convection current CO2 rise and the water saturation, uh, which decreased initially and now is followed by an increase. So we move to the drainage part, to the initial part due to the hysteresis in relative permeability. Um, hysteresis of the, the gas relative permeability begins and leads to the CO2 trap. In this case, uh, the CO2 trap is about 35% in saturation. Another uh, important mechanism uh, that I need to mention is the CO2 solubility in water. Um, it's important to model CO2 as a soluble uh, component in brine through equations based on the Henry's law to take into account the CO2 in equals uh, phase. And it's important to model uh, the acid uh, reaction uh, between the CO2 and the water uh, to generate ions like bicarbonate and carbonate in the brine. Uh, as you know, uh, that mechanism uh, is dependent on pressure. Uh, we have a positive relationship. Uh, the, the solubility increase when the pressure uh, increases in the reservoir or in the aquifer. Uh, but uh, there is um, a negative uh, relationship with the temperature and another re re negative uh, relationship with the brine salinity, as shown in this graph. Uh, it's important to point out the mechanism of mineral re uh, trapping uh, due to the reactions uh, between the CO2 injected, injected and the species um, uh, and uh, CO2 species in water, like bicarbonate, and the mineral, the primary mineral in the rock, in the rock matrix, such as calcite, dolomite, uh, typical reactive minerals that can occur in the, the rock matrix, such as in carbonate uh, matrix, in carbonate rocks, or as a cementation in, in sandstones, for instance. In this case, it can happen the generation of new, new minerals or the dissolution, dissolution of original primary minerals with the lower pH generated by the CO2 injection uh, in porous media. As I mentioned, uh, I, our goal is to represent uh, those mechanic, me uh, mechanisms in field scale models. Uh, for, for that purpose, we create this workflow. This workflow, uh, the, the, our, the goal of this workflow is just is to model the, those mechanisms in field scale models to 
to to to evaluate uh, the their importance in the for the CCS projects. Uh, the first step of this uh, workflow is to simulate the the process, the CCS process, process in a high resolution uh, model or sub model. Uh, that sub model uh, needs to be characterized with representative properties from the field scale model. Uh, this model can be a sector model extract from the field scale model and populated with a representative uh, porosity and representative or average permeability, for example. Uh, the submodel uh, simulation uh, is performed to consider all the mechanisms for CO2 trap trapping in this example in, in a saline aquifer. So we need to take into account the CO2 dissolved in water, the CO2 trapped as a residual gas, and the, the free CO2 as a supercritical gas and the mineralized CO2. Uh, based on uh, the results of the, this first step, we can rank the most representative mechanisms to select and consider in the full field scale model, the, the second part of this uh, workflow, only the, the most uh, important mechanism select in the first part of this workflow. For example, uh, if if the if rock matrix is a sandstone with low concentration of reactive minerals such as calcite and dolomite, uh, the impact of mineralization or dissolution reaction reaction over hundred or thousand of years uh, will be will be slow, so it will be small. So we can follow without uh, mineral reactions in our modeling to the second part of our uh, workflow. Um, to the following step, after select the main, uh, the, the, the most important mechanism uh, in the first part, the, 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 the second part, the third part of the workflow is to evaluate uh, the application, the possibility to applicate a uh, single phase upscaling, preserve the main petrophysical heterogeneities. And the last part uh, is to adopt a dynamic grid refinement. Therefore, uh, the, the, the final model combines the selection of a relevant mechanism um, for field, uh, field uh, for full field model, uh, upscaling, uh, upscaling, numerical upscaling, and perform dynamic refinement in order to reduce the, the simulation time. To test our proposal, uh, a synthetic heterogeneous model of a uh, silane aquifer was created using a high resolution grid scale. Uh, uh, in this case, we are using uh, grid blocks with size of 10 meters per 10 meters horizontally and one meter of thickness. The, the number of active uh, grid blocks in this case is more than 400,000 elements. Um, uh, we applied a single phase flow upscale technique and create a coarse version of this fine model. Uh, this coarse model has, has only 20, uh, only 240 grid blocks, 240 grid blocks with size of 150 meters per 150 meters horizontally. Uh, we locate an injector in the center of both models and this inject this injection injector well inject a cumulative uh, CO2 uh, uh, cumulative amount of CO2 of 80 8000 uh, metric tons uh, do over five years of, uh, of injection this correspond around five percent of the total power volume of the aquifer model The reservoir mineralogy in volumetric fraction was composed by quartz, uh, almost 30% of quartz and K feldspar, 8% uh, and plagioclase, uh, 5% according to this diagram. Uh, the following uh, mineral reactions were modeled based on the, the, this rock mineralogy and this water composition uh, using Kinect parameters from FreeC database available in the GEM uh, numerical simulator that I use in this work. This, the simulation times uh, I represent in this slide. This is X represents the simulation times. Uh, 
for 105 years of simulation, I mean consider five years of injection, more uh, after injection shut off, I simulate more 100 years. I, I, I'm using a machine with 40 processors and use the, the last version of GM uh, simulator. Uh, those green bars represent the simulation time in a fine grid model. Uh, the first green bar uh, with a simulation time of 100 hours, consider the, the fine model uh, with mineral reactions. When we cut the, the mineral reactions from the modeling, we reduce these 100 hours to 20 hours. Is the, as, as shown in this, in this second uh, green bar. The, the blue bars uh, represent the simulation, consider mineral reaction or, uh, uh, or neglect the mineral reaction in a coarse grid model. Um, uh, the, the, the simulation times are very small, but uh, the results uh, are not consistent with the high resolution models and I will discuss this point later. Uh, therefore, uh, the optimal, optimal uh, grid size needs to provide consistent uh, results uh, and uh, lower CPU time, lower simulation time. Uh, one approach to combine uh, good results and lower uh, simulation time is to use dynamic grid refinement. Use a fine grid when the fluid saturation, in this case uh, CO2 saturation or water saturation chains are high, uh, as represented by uh, these yellow, uh, yellow bars. These yellow bars apply dynamic grid refinement. The first one consider uh, mineral reactions and the CPU time, the simulation time is um, 20 hours. If I uh, cut the, the mineral reactions from my model, I reduce from 20 hours to five hours of simulation. In this case, the mineral reactions are ignored. So the dynamic uh, grid uh, refinement reduces the, the CPU, CPU time by a factor of four and five uh, when, I, when we compare to the uniform fine grid size, the first uh, green bar. Now let's go to, do the, the, to the results in terms of uh, time. Uh, I, I show you that uh, it's a good approach to combine uh, local grid refinement and other uh, trapping mechanism, but we need to, I need to prove uh, that the results are consistent. Um, to analyze the results, uh, I, uh, I will compare the three proposed grid scales. In green is the fine model, the original fine model. Uh, in blue is the, the coarse model after the upscale, the numerical upscale for the, the fine model. And the, in red is the dynamic uh, grid combining the fine and coarse uh, grid scales. Uh, this uh, we, we are showing here three graphs. The first graph is the the free CO2 uh, as a as non-trapped CO2 as a, a supercritical fluid in porous media. And this bottom graph on the left is the trapped CO2 as a residual gas due to the the hysteresis. And the bottom right graph uh, is the dissolved uh, CO2 in water. The results of a coarse grid in blue uh, are different when we can see uh, it's completely different uh, from those obtained to use a fine grid or dynamic grid uh, over 100 years of simulation. During this time, uh, no mineralization, no CO2 mineralization solution was uh, observed. Um, those graphs bring up how to how a coarse grid is inadequate to simulate CO2 trapping process in porous media, which misrepresent the unstable flow and channeling. Uh, it's observed uh, that the larger uh, pore volume in those uh, grid blocks, in the coarse grid blocks, amplifies the CO2 solubility, as shown in this graph. The CO2 solubility is higher uh, in the coarse model due to the larger pore volume in these blocks. It's moving, uh, that is move uh, the, the CO2 plume. Uh, it occurs due to the large avail, available water 
uh, for uh, CO2 to, for, to, to, to solubilize the CO2, and it reduces the CO2 occurrence in the free forms and the trapped form. As an example of how to uh, how the dynamic grid works, uh, this slide shows us the grid refinement following the evolution of the CO2 plume. This is, the, this is a cross-sectional view. You can see the CO2 plume rising and the grid refinement uh, uh, follow the, 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 the path of the CO2. Now, the, now let's validate uh, this this uh, uh, methodology in a real uh, case. This this area is a uh, real aquifer in Brazil. Um, uh, it's located in Campus Basin in, in Brazil, in the southeast of Brazil. Uh, this case is a sandstone, uh, basically composed by quartz and feldspar. Uh, the the mineral composition is the same that I present uh, before. The porous is around. 25% of porosity and the permeability, the horizontal permeability is around 200 millidarc. Uh, the fluid uh, properties are the same, the briny salinity is the same, and this is, the, is a, a huge aquifer uh, that encompasses a volume more than 150 billion cubic meters, uh, represented by this number of active grid blocks. So it's a typical full field as field scale model. Uh, the block size is uh, the block size are larger numbers. Uh, in this example is 250 meters per 250 meters. Uh, and we evaluate to inject CO2 over uh, five years in a constant rate of 300 uh, metric tons per year. Let's go to the results first in terms of uh, simulation time, in the same uh, fashion that I presented before. Uh, in this case, I mean, I'm presenting the results for five years of simu simulation and more two years after the injection shutoff. The, the first three blue bars uh, is the represent the, the, the CPU time in the original uh, grid model, which it's not adequate to, to model the mechanism because uh, the, the grid size uh, is larger, as I discussed previously. The refined, the refined uh, model uh, is represented by the green bars. Uh, the first green bar with extensive uh, local grid refine without the mineral reactions runs for eight to six hours. Performing a up layer match, combining several layers to create new layers, um, I can reduce this this um, this simulation time to 13 hours. It's the second green bar, uh, whereas dynamic grid refine reduce to only two hours. So if we, I if we apply a dynamic grid refine to combine this a course model created after uh, upscaling with the, 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 the original course model, I can reduce this time, this uh, eight, six hours to only uh, two hours. With this last version of the model, uh, I can simulate more time. I can, I can enhance the, the, the number of years uh, after uh, CO2 injection. I enhance it to, I increase this number from 20 to 500 years of simulation and it takes 20 hours uh, uh, to simulate more uh, 500 years, which, uh, which is still a plausible, uh, plausible time, a uh, feasible time for field project evaluation. The results, uh, just to compare the results before and after the, the upscale in terms of uh, bottom hole pressure and the CO2 injection rate, the results is the same. Uh, our our upscale method, analytic upscale method, don't uh, don't it doesn't change the, the the behavior of the 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 well curves. And this the this is the 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 final cumulative CO2 trapped by different mechanisms uh, in terms of percentage over five 
he uh, 500 years uh, of simulation. Consider the field scale ECFR model that real that I presented before. Uh, this graph shows us that the high amount of CO2 is, uh, in a, is dissolved in water, is the blue part of this graph. Um, there is a, 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 some CO2 as a residual uh, ga uh, trapped gas in red. And in the beginning of simulation, we can see some free CO2 the, in a supercritical uh, fluid, as a supercritical fluid. So let's go to the partial conclusions of this first part of my presentation. Um, the first partial, partial conclusion for CO2 storage simulation, uh, you need to consider different mechanisms of trapping uh, CO2 in a consistent grid scale to represent those mechanisms. The proposed workflow uh, can be applied to reduce the, the simulation time and keep the accurate representation of the CO2 trapping mechanisms. And this point is important for us because uh, this make possible simulate these mechanisms in field scale models to, uh, to support the decision related to a, a new project, a new big CCS project, for example. The simulation time was reduced by more than 95% in the tested case, and then we test two uh, cases, a synthetic case and a real case that we are planning to inject CO2 uh, in, in Brazil for next year. The results preserve the same level of quality in the representation of the CO2 trapping mechanisms. Uh, when the results obtained from the respective fine scale grid model, models are taken as reference. So uh, uh, now I, I, will, I would like to move to the second part of my presentation. And in the second part, I will uh, talk about the, the other uh, level of risks, the injectivity risk. Uh, that is important to, 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 to keep the, 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 the target injectivity uh, that was planned for the, the project. In this sense, uh, an accurate forecast of uh, injectivity behavior of the wells, the well injectors, is essential for planning the flexibility of the project, such as uh, the number uh, of injection wells, uh, the number of additional wells for monitoring, and that, if necessary, we can convert some monitoring wells to new injector wells. So it's important to, to, uh, for us to, to, to predict accurately the, the injectivity and to monitor the injectivity over the years of the project. Uh, in order to prevent and expect the loss of injectivity during, during the CCS operation, uh, each experimental and numerical studies are recommended to anticipate and be prepared for the risk that may uh, occur during the field operations. In this sense, several authors, I, I marked, the, I, 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 cite, I cited several authors in red in this uh, slide. Um, and those authors uh, have dedicated themselves to the experimental studies uh, of the CO2 uh, injectivity behavior in porous medium and the main factors that affect the injectivity. Uh, we can character, characterize uh, those uh, alphas uh, in the following items, and the, the four items according, according to the dominant uh, geochemical mechanisms. The first item uh, is related to the salt uh, deposition. Uh, salt deposition deals with the creation of a dry out zone around the, the well uh, due to the, the CO2 supercritical injection. And due to the higher solubility, uh, uh, the higher so water solubility in the CO2 phase, result, result in the deposition of a saline, saline scale, mainly highlights, that can affect uh, its injectivity. So uh, CO2 vaporizes some water, and the, 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 the water salinity. Um, and make uh, create uh, a salt deposition around the well affect the injectivity. This is the, the, the point of this first mechanism. Uh, 
the second mechanisms combine the water vaporization, create the, the dry out zone and the mineral reactions. Uh, this is important to include the possibility of dissolution of uh, reactive minerals from the rock matrix or from the cementation of the rock, uh, because this solution can increase, can enhance the original porosity and the permeability around the injector. And uh, this enhancement can compensate part of the loss uh, of injectivity caused by the salt deposition, caused by the first uh, mechanism. Uh, the third mechanism uh, is related to the, the fines migration. Uh, the, the second generate uh, a mineral dissolution and fines can, can be generated uh, due to this, uh, during this dissolution can generate fines and those fines can be destabilized by reducing the, the, the capillarity between the fines and the rock. And this fine can flow uh, in, in the in the reservoir and plug the pores, impacting in the well injectivity. The last mechanism uh, is related to uh, to the hydrite formation in porous media. Uh, hydrite can be formed by the contact between water and CO2, and water and and hydrocarbon gas like methane in case of injection in depleted reservoir, for example. But in our case, uh, I'm concentrated in aquifer in, in this example. Uh, I mean, I I I I'm, I'm, I'm focused. I'm concerned with the hydrite due to the the CO2 and and water. Um, this hydride, in both cases, in aquifer or in, in the depleted reservoir, hydride can be formed under uh, specific conditions of injection rate, pressure, and lower temperature. Uh, in order to, to model the previous mechanisms, we built a synthetic, a new synthetic, in this case, 2D model of a saline aquifer to test the methodology to for incorporate them that mechanisms that affect uh, CO2 injectivity. Those mechanisms are uh, were observed in lab scale and now uh, we try to model in field scale to, to see the impact in field scale. Uh, this model is, contains an injector well uh, and the, the properties of this model uh, is uh, in, listed in this table. Uh, just to mention the, the salinity is around, the original salinity is around 150,000 ppm and the initial temperature is 64 degrees Celsius. Now let's give some examples how to, to model those uh, mechanisms. Um, uh, let's, uh, let's start with the model of water vaporization that creates uh, a salt deposition uh, zone around the well. Uh, in this case, um, both water and CO2 are modeled together as a component in the equation of state, and you need to carry out flash calculation to take into account the molar fractions of each component in those phase uh, in water in the gas at each time step. Uh, uh, the highlight uh, scale reduces the, the, the porosity uh, of the region around the wells, this, this uh, red, uh, this green region around the well, uh, the permeability accord, uh, uh, the, the porosity is reduced and the new permeability is calculated by the Kozemi Karma uh, equation. Uh, in this case, after five years of CO2 injection, the injectivity, uh, uh, the reduction injectivity was almost 10%. The initial injectivity is considered 100%. And after uh, five years of injection, due to this, the, this area of reduced permeability, the injectivity was reduced to 91%. If I uh, reduce the, 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 the bright salinity from 150,000 to uh, 40,000 typical uh, seawater salinity, uh, the, the reduction in the injectivity is only uh, 1%. And this number are uh, consistent with the mention um, in the published in the lab uh, experimental uh, works. As I mentioned, uh, mineral solution can generate fines, and these fines can mobilize and plug pores. 
affecting the well injectivity. To model these mechanisms uh, was carried out by incorporating a dynamic reduction multiplier. This is the multiplier K over K0. K0 is the original uh, permeability um, uh, of the perforate grid blocks, and K is the new permeability calculated using this analytical model uh, due to Wang by Wang. Uh, uh, in this model, uh, he assumed some uh, coefficients, and those coefficients um, are obtained from history match with lab data. So we, we use the, the coefficient uh, uh, consistent with our um, brain salinity. And we define this user, um, the user uh, variable in the, the simulator to reduce the permeability. To, 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 to represent the, 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 the damage due to the, the, the fine migration. Now let's to compare the, 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 the cumulative effect of those mechanisms on the injectivity. Uh, the base case uh, is the bar represented by 100%. If I consider the south deposition, this, uh, the injectivity is reduced to 91%. If I uh, consider the presence of reactive minerals, the solution can improve part of the permeability and the, the, this phenomena enhance the, increase the permeability from 91 to 92%. But if I consider the fines uh, migration modeling, an additional uh, injective to loss drops to 87% of the original value. Uh, sensitivity analysis uh, was performed to better understand the, the impact of multiple parameters on CC, CO2 uh, injectivity. Uh, this tornado plot um, uh, was generated using a, a quadratic response surface model calibrated with several numerical simulations. In this graph, you can see the capillary, the ratio between the capillary and viscous force. Um, uh, was the most relevant parameter uh, that can be explained uh, because a higher uh, injection rate intensifies the CO2 injection, which increases the water vaporization and the salt deposition, thus affecting the injectivity. The introduction of finance migration occurrence, uh, yes or no, like a binary, uh, also exerts a significant influence, resulting in additional reduction in permeability. Other less critical parameters is the, the injection temperature, the, 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 the maximal uh, residual gas trapped, and the brine salinity in this case represented by the concentration of ions of sodium and chloride. Uh, an isolated sensitivity story on uh, injectivity as a function of horizontal permeability was performed. Uh, the salt deposition, mineral dissolution, and fine migrations were included in this sensitivity. From this graph, we conclude that the impact of injectives is less pronounced in higher permeability formation. We can see uh, the, the, the permeability, when the permeability is higher than 100%, the injective to reduc reduction is uh, small when compared with our base case, and our base case has 10 millidarsi of, uh, of reduction. And we consider all those mechanisms together, the reduction in permeability, in reduction in injectivity was 87%. This, this reduction, reduction can be reduced uh, if my original permeability uh, was higher than my original permeability. Now let's talk about hydrate because I mentioned hydrate in my first slide of the second part, but I'm, I, 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 I didn't include the hydrate in the, the sensitivity analysis. I model hydrate in, in another way, use another uh, simulator. I'm using this star simulates uh, from CMG because I need to, to, to define the, 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 the reaction, I need to specify the reaction for hydrate for the formation of hydrate, the first reaction, and for, for the solution of hydrate, the second uh, uh, reaction. Uh, 
Uh, I'm, I'm assuming a, a bottom hole injection temperature of 10 degrees. Uh, it's possible to see the, the hydrate uh, formation in this and uh, the shallowest perforated layer, this red layer. The red, the color represents the amount of hydrate in, in moles per uh, cubic meters. Um, the hydrate reduce the, the permeability by a half. The original permeability is 10, but as hydrate was formed in, in this layer, the, in this layer, the permeability was reduced uh, by half in the early times after hydrate formation. Uh, for long term, in this case, the hydrate blocks permanent, per, uh, permanent, permanently these grid blocks. To compare the impact of the hydrate with previous injectivity loss mechanisms, uh, we assume uh, we assume that the hydrate plug the correspondent grid block in the J model because uh, all those mechanisms are originally modeled in Gen simulator. Only the hydrate was modeled in stars, so we took the consequence of the hydrate in star simulates and specify uh, Gem. Uh, with zero permeability from the time uh, that hydrate was formed in the uh, STARS model. Uh, this is the cumulative uh, reduction injectivity, consider the different um, uh, mechanisms and the hydrate, uh, consider the hydrate uh, uh, formation drops the injectivity to 73% of about its original value. As I did before, now let's uh, move to a real uh, a model of a real case. It's the same case, a classic sandstone reservoir, classic aquifer uh, uh, in Brazil, the 3D case. Uh, we include uh, the water vaporization uh, and highlight the position, generating the dry out zone around the well with saline scale. This is the, the, the amount in moles of highlight um, uh, uh, formed around the, the, the well in this left uh, this, in this image. And this right side uh, shows us the mole fraction, uh, the water mole fraction increases uh, in the water phase as a result of the water vaporization with the CO2 injection. The salt uh, scale causes uh, a reduction in permeability in the region around uh, the well. Uh, this region has a radius during this time of injection, three years of injection. This region has a, a radius of 200 um, meters. Uh, this, in, in this uh, region, uh, the permeability is reduced by about 1%, but uh, however, in the grid blocks, in the perforated grid block cells, um, the, the permeability is, uh, was reduced by 2-3% two, two, of from the original value. Uh, this uh, figure shows us the, the evolution of injectivity, consider uh, all the mechanism, uh, uh, the salt deposition. Uh, we also consider the unknown isothermal a simulation to take into account the variation, the impact of the temperature in the fluid properties uh, in a non isothermal run, and the injectivity uh, reduces to 95%. Uh, it happens due to the cooling generated by CO2 that increases the viscosity of the formation water. And we when we couple this last case with the model of finest migration that I presented before, the injectivity dropped to 52% about its original value. We transfer again our input file from GEN to STARS to evaluate, to assess the, the risk of hydrate formation. In this case, uh, we don't, we, we cannot see hydrate in porous media. Uh, this is the injection point. This graph is uh, as a temperature graph. Uh, this graph shows us the, the CO2 rate injecting in green. And in blue is the amount of hydrate in porous media. We can see there is no hydrate, is zero, the amount of hydrate uh, in porous media in this case. In this case, there is no risk uh, in, in, for these conditions to generate hydrate in porous media. 
We can compare our simulation results with uh, the hydrate uh, diagram generated by uh, using our PVTC software. Uh, the points from our simulation uh, uh, are located outside the, the hydrate zone, risk, risk zone, confirm the consistency of our results, which do not indicate hydrate phase in porous medium. Uh, we plot only the pressures range at the minimal uh, temperature reached in the STARS module, which would be the most favorable condition for hydrate formation. Even in this condition, there is no hydrate formed in porous media. So now to let's to conclude the presentation. Uh, uh, the work showed that it's possible to incorporate different mechanisms uh, observed in lab in field scale models. Uh, those mechanisms can impact in the injectivity even in field models, so it's important to consider uh, the possibility uh, of uh, this, this phenomena in, for project evaluation. According, according to our modeling results, the risk of injectivity during CACS operation observed in lab scales is also applicable in field scales, as I mentioned. And for planning proposal, a field scale numerical model is the most suitable tool for quantify the risk and uncertainty, since it can couple several uh, mechanisms uh, of injectivity alteration. In summary, uh, the results show the importance of considering the uncertainty of injectivity loss in CCS project, uh, where amount of CO2 is captured for CCS, must be injected into a storage site, often with no other alternative for surface storage or other utilization. Highlight the, the need to provide flexibility in the project planning to deal with such risk. Uh, this slide just to sum up the mechanism modeled in this study, considering uh, field scale models characterized in two parts. The first part relates to the, the mechanisms of storage, and the second part, the mechanisms that affect the injectivity. So to, to finish my presentation, I would like uh, to, to thank you for your attention uh, uh, during this hour. Uh, I'd like to, to thank my company, Petrobras, to, for founding my stay uh, in Austin. Uh, I'd like to a special thank to Professor Del Chad and Professor Kami for receiving me in your nice and competent re research group. I'm very lucky to work with them. And I'm very glad to, about the invitation to this talk. So I'd like to thank you, Professor Barhoff, Emilio and Joana. Thanks for the opportunity uh, to present and the attention. And for now, I will be glad to answer some questions. The first question is for the fine submodel, is the attribution of CO2 into dissolved versus uh, trapped versus free an assumption or based on an uh, experimental uh, study? Thanks. Thank you, Hazan, for the question. Um, uh, in this case, the, uh, uh, the the attribution is result of my simulation. Um, uh, I, I model the mechanism, I model the, 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 the possibility of CO2 uh, dissolve, dissolve, to be dissolved in water according to Henry's law and the reactions to generate um, uh, CO2 ions in, in brine. And I'm assuming a model to, to to represent the hysteresis to generate the trapped CO2. So as a consequence of those this modeling, I can generate the, the CO2 in different forms. It's a, it's a result of my simulation. It's not an input. The input is the, 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 uh, is the, the properties to, to, ca to characterize the, the, mo the, the models. But the, 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 as a consequence of this model, I have uh, these results and, and I have the CO2 uh, in different uh, ways. I can, we can compare if, we, if you have a field data for a real case, we can compare, for example, uh, using data from a monitor well, we can compare the ions uh, from water uh, with the, the numerical simulation and see the, 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 how accurate 
is my representation of the, the evolution of the ions in water uh, when compared with real data. It's a, it's a practical way to, to, to make sure uh, if my assumption to model those mechanisms are consistent or not. Or not. Another question, uh, I have another question for Ismael. Thank you, Ismael, for the question. In your experience, how fine should the uh, refined model uh, be? Uh, the first part, the second part is if you keep refining the grid, at uh, what level to, to the difference becomes insignificant? Good question, Ismael. I tried different uh, levels of refinement. Um, um, for example, in the real case, my original grid size has two, 250 meters. So I create uh, three or five uh, levels of refinement from this number. I create the uh, three, th three times uh, refinement, five times and ten times. And when I use uh, five times finer than the original one, it will, I have the same results uh, when I uh, compare with the uh, 10 times uh, refined. So uh, uh, in this case, um, grid blocks with 500 per 500 horizontally, um, it was enough to, 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 to get the same uh, level of, uh, of representation of another grid uh, 10 times uh, lower in terms of uh, refinement. So when, uh, we need to, to, to evaluate. For each case, we need to evaluate uh, to, 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 to define the reference case, uh, 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 to, to define our, a reference case to compare the results. Another question. Um, well, I, I have a, a, a big question from Alessandra. Uh, South deposition only creates permeability impairment if there is additional brine in fill through inhibition during certain periods, the absence of injection. Uh, enough salt volume uh, must be precipitated through evaporation over time in order to plug pores through formation dependence. So uh, this takes a long time uh, to develop and depends on the brine salient. In the Quest project that took place over a number of years, as the brine would imbibe the pore space during uh, shutting periods. This is remade with fresh OK water injection. Can CMG model this effect by region away from well bore? If I define uh, impairment regions, can we model different mitigation options to determine the best one? Yes, yes, good, good point. Uh, uh, in this case, I assume the 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 mechanism, the, the mechanism according to the, the, the lab experiment. So the, the lab uh, uh, paper that I, 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 I based my, my modeling, uh, consider the, the, the salt deposition on, only around the well. Don't consider this mechanism that you mentioned, but uh, you can try to, to, to create this, uh, assume different, uh, uh, different rock types, and for each rock type, you can assume uh, specific uh, modeling um, to, to, to represent the, the, the uh, to represent the reactions between the, the, the brine and the, the CO2. Maybe it's a, it's a possible approach to, 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 to create this case. And you, you can try uh, different um, Mitigation options. Uh, you can uh, read, you can uh, uh, over the, the the schedule of your uh, uh, of uh, over years. You can uh, try. You can generate some uh, uh, restart files and uh, implement some mitigation options and evaluate. Consider a, a base case. So it's possible, I think it's possible to model uh, these mechanisms in, uh, that you mentioned, and it's possible to, to try a mitigation option to determine the best one. Thank you for the question. Uh, does geochemical impacts get studied here? Uh, yes, I consider the, the geochemical impact for generation of fines, and I assume that fines can plug the pores, and impacting the injectivity, so I consider the geochemical 
uh, was studying this uh, in this uh, in this work uh, related to the, the 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 injectivity loss. Another question: What was uh, the boundary uh, conditions used the in the food full field model? Uh, the boundary condition is the, is a sealed aquifer because uh, the my full field models uh, are very huge models, so uh, the 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 CO2 uh, plume don't uh, didn't uh, reach the the boundary, so boundary condition is not important uh, for this uh, study, but uh, the boundary condition uh, was considered as a sealed uh, sealed uh, aquifer. Okay, so in this case, uh, there is no impact in the injectivity because uh, the, the boundary is, is, is very far from my uh, well location. The well uh, was always uh, located in the center of the, the model. So, so it's a, a way to, to ensure that the boundary uh, don't impact in the, in the injectivity uh, analysis. Thank you for the question. Another question from Fabio. Thank you, Fabio, for the question. Have you tried to run the simulation using kinetic assumption? Yes, uh, all the simulations I'm mean, using kinetic assumptions from uh, transient uh, TST. Yeah. Uh, what's the impact on modeling in comparison to equilibrium assumption? Uh, in this in this case, uh, I, uh, I I I didn't compare with uh, the equilibrium assumption. Uh, now I'm I'm working on another case um, related to the carbonates uh, rocks. So in this case, I'm evaluate uh, how to represent the calcite dissolution, and I, I'm 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 performing some comparison between the the calcite dissolution modeled by uh, kinetics or modeling by equilibrium assumption. So, but in this case, I also assume connect to model the, the reactions. In the case of carbonate reservoir encountered uh, in MENA, high temperature, high saline reservoir, where oil is also present, the mineralogy trapping will uh, be relevant according to your approach. In that case, uh, would you use the same approach? Keep in mind the oil recovery uh, is also found present during our sequestration process. How can you consider both processes at the same time? See, uh, GEM is capable to, of, of doing this. Um, yes, it's possible to, to apply the same uh, methodology. I need, uh, we need to, to do some um, some modifications, for example, if you have oil, you need to consider uh, the, the oil as a third phase, and you need to, to assume other uh, hysteresis uh, model to consider three phase hysteresis. Um, but uh, the idea is to combine uh, upscaling, to combine uh, dynamic grid refinement can be applied uh, in both cases, in, in aquifer case or depleted reservoir case, as you mentioned in your case. Thank you for the question. Just to thank you again for the, the and say that additional questions can be addressed to me by email. I put my email in the, the cover slide and I, I will be glad to, to receive additional questions and try to answer by email. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, so uh, thanks a lot, Dr. Machado. That was uh, outstanding. And I wanna thank our audience and for all the great questions. Uh, just as a reminder, we will post this on YouTube, so uh, please share with your colleagues when they come up and, and let them know about our monthly webinar and, and uh, ask them to, to follow us on LinkedIn. But uh, we'll see you next month. I believe Dr. Espinoza will be giving a, um, a webinar. So thank you again.